hey, this is for my ladies. Um, for my men too, I guess, but more so I'm speaking to women and some of you may be able to relate to this. Now, I want to talk about comparison. I want to talk about comparison because sometimes as women, we can put ourselves in situations that we will often compare ourselves to what we lack in. So let's say, for instance, you are in a relationship and you don't understand why uh, the man you are with continues to cheat on you. You don't understand why he will not be faithful to you. And so just talking on this for a second, if you are in a position where you are questioning your value and your worth, you are trying to prove your worth to somebody, I need you to know that this is not the way to win their heart. This is not going to help you win them over whoever has them captivated, right? Hard truth, but it is what it is. Um, what I don't want you to do is to begin comparing yourself because when you do that, it is detrimental to your mental capacity. Like it's, it's, It goes against who God created you to be. And then you become confused and you start trying to be other people that you can't be because you're too busy comparing yourself to them. You're looking at what do they do that I don't do? You know, what what is the deal? What's better about them that's not? And sometimes you just got to understand that it's not you. It isn't you. Now, sometimes we can aid in decisions, but ultimately the decision is theirs to make. Like you can't make people cheat on you. You, you can't. There may be reasons, oh, well, you know, I'm cheating on her because X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, bro, actually you're cheating because you got problems for yourself. You have a decision to make. You could have just left her. You could break up with her and let her go be with somebody else. But instead of doing that, you decide that you want to hold on to her and do what you want to do. So that's how this is not really about you. It's really about the person who's doing the cheating. But the key here is that you don't get caught up in the mindset, um, the negative mindset that you got to somehow go and become the women that he's cheating on you with. That's not going to help nothing. You need to be who God created you to be. God has called you for a greater purpose than to be somebody's plaything. Baby, if he ain't put a ring on your finger, then you need to, and he cheating? There's no reason for you to be held to him. None. Whatsoever. And so what I, I am writing a book, right? I am writing a book. The book, I am planning to finish it this month. December 2023. Hopefully it will be finished by then. I'm working on it and uh, I'm pretty excited. I am sharing some things that I have learned. I'm sharing some stories um, to relate to what I have gone through. And I really hope, I really pray, my prayer is that this book lands in the hands of every single person who needs to hear these things to help them overcome this, this season of their life where they feel hopeless. The season of their life where they feel like they just want to give up. The season of their life where they don't know, like they want better for their life, but they don't know how to get there. That is who I'm trying to reach with this. They're hurting, they're broken, they're tired. They're, they don't have a voice for themselves. They're afraid to do what God has called them to do because they're not, they feel like they're not equipped to do it. So they won't use their voice. They've been silenced. They've been muzzled. The pain has silenced them. The person that they don't want to let go of has silenced them. You feel belittled. You feel dumb. You feel like you don't amount to nothing. You feel like you don't know what you're talking about. This is for you. Because I'm going to tell you this, there is a trick of the enemy and the enemy comes in to allow, to get us to get off of the calling that God has placed on our life. He knows that we are called for a greater purpose, but if he can get us stuck and trapped in a cycle of the repetitive behaviors, all he got to do is take a step back and we destroy our own lives. It's not until we realize and we wake up to understand that we were created for greater, that we want to do greater for our lives. And let me tell you one thing. Comparison is not greater for you. Comparison is not greater for you. Comparing yourself isn't going to help the situation at all. If anything, it'll only make you feel more depleted because you can't be who you are authentically. Don't be with anybody if you can't be your authentic self. 
You should be able to be who you are the way God created you to be without feeling like you got a sugar coat and act like you somebody else. So I just want to share that with you. And I want you to share this with somebody that needs to hear it because God has a plan for your life. He knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb and you was made and created for purpose. You were appointed for what he has called you to do. And the devil will stop at nothing to cause you to become distracted by somebody rather than focusing on what God has called you to do in your life. So y'all be looking out for that book. I think it's going to really be impactful for those that um, that are going through things like this because God did not help me get through all of this just for me to keep it to myself. And I'm going to tell you the same thing, not that you are called to write a book, but God walks us through different parts of our lives, not for us to harbor on to the story and the experiences and the learning things that you have to go through just for you to keep it in your pocket. You have been called to a certain person. Somebody needs what you have to say. They need to hear what you have to say. Some people need to hear your story. So don't be afraid to open up your mouth and share what God has done for you. Don't be afraid to open up your mouth and, and be willing to stand before the people and tell them, this is how God brought me through. I used to be this. I used to be that. But now I'm not. The old me is dead and gone. Now I am a new creature in Christ. I have accepted my position as a princess, a daughter of the king. I have accepted my citizenship in heaven. God has backed me. God has covered me. God has brought me a long way and it wasn't for him I would probably be already dead in my grave if it wasn't for him I would have lost my mind a long time ago you got to be to the point where you're not harboring and being selfish with the revelation and the trials and the testimonies that God has given you he didn't do it just for you he did it for you to share with somebody else he didn't deliver you just so you can be free he delivered you because he needs you to now go and help somebody else get delivered. You see what I'm saying? And so I need you to, to come out of the shadows, come out of the dark, come out of your hiding places and open up your mouth and pour into somebody else. Help somebody not make the same mistake that you made. Help them. You see somebody struggling, going through what you went through, help them, give them some guidance. That's what God wants us to do. Seek God, pray to God, ask him what parts of your story you should share. Ask him who you need to talk to, right? Ask him because not everything about our story needs to be shared, right? Some of the most intimate details of the story, they don't necessarily need to be broadcast across social media, online and videos or whatever have you. Sometimes those are just for intimate settings because you need to share certain details with somebody specifically because that's the way that they're going to relate to what you're saying. But you got to use wisdom and discernment to know what parts of your story to share. So don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of what people are going to think about you. Who cares what they think? Paul says, am I now here to please people over God? I think not because if I please people, then I can't please God. We got to put our priorities together and put our priorities straight. God is the one that we should be prioritizing over anybody else. I had to think about the way that I'm going about doing things. And it's like, okay, I know that God has called me to share my story with people. I know that God has called me to greater. I know that he is going to use my voice. Like I already know this stuff. One thing I had to do was overcome the fear of speaking. The second thing I had to do was be okay with whatever people think about me. I can't control the way you think about me. And, and why should I even care? If God told me to do it, then who, who am I? To go against what God said because you're you're you don't want me to talk about that. Or you're gonna think that I'm um whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm to the point in my life where I can't care what other people think. I I only care about what God thinks. I don't need I don't need um I don't need assurance from people. I don't need people to affirm me. And you should not either. And we got to get to a point where we don't need people to affirm us. We got to please God, not people. 
So if God has called you to share any part of your story, I want to encourage you to go back to God and pray about what you need to share and, and send the people that you need to share it to. Ask him how you want how he wants you to share it. Who do you need to share it with? You don't be surprised if you run into somebody on the streets and he's like, you need to talk to her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just want to encourage you to be bold in your faith. Continue to grow. Um, separate yourself from people that no longer serve your life. Separate yourself from people that are pulling you away from God. Separate yourself from people who are treating you poorly. Um, if you are in a relationship and that person is cheating on you, separate yourself from them, okay? Um, if you are married to the person that's cheating on you, I what I need you to do is is go to God. What, and I also need you to try to work on your marriage. I also need you to um, ask God to show you yourself and that if there be anything within you that you need to work on, that he will reveal that to you um, so you can turn it over to him. What I also need you to do is try to seek counsel. Don't be afraid or too prideful to get in front of counsel. Um, do cap couples counseling. Talk to them. Some people I hear that say that their spouse was cheating. They cheated on them. They only cheated like one time. And I'm not saying that that's okay for somebody to cheat one time. A cheat is a cheat. But what I am saying is that when that person is genuinely, you know, sorry, remorseful for what they did. And they're like, baby, I'm not going to do it. I promise, like, this was the only time this is what happened. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to go to counseling. I'm ready. I'm willing for you to have all the passwords on my phone, which you should have anyway. I'm willing to, uh, whatever, you, whatever it is you need me to do, I'm willing because I'm so serious. I'm not trying to live this life. I'm not trying to lose my, my family. I'm not trying to do all this stuff. When you see that this person is genuinely remorseful and they have repented of their sins and they have they're trying to really work on it with you yes you may be hurt but that person i would say that type of person you could give them a, another opportunity to get it right y'all can go and do counseling and, and try to work it out because the bible tells us that yes divorce is uh you can divorce is um infidelity is gr is grounds for divorce however have you tried to work things out because most of the time, people get divorced because of their own heart and hearts. But we're not going to talk. I'm, I'm done with that. I just wanted to get on and just encourage you to tell your story. Maybe I'll talk more about divorce and infidelity and all that stuff um, in another video. But for right now, be encouraged and remember to let what you do inspire others. Peace.